It's true, you can plant radishes in the month of August, but why would you do that when radishes aren't very good? I'm just kidding, radishes aren't all that bad, but they aren't my favorite. And in this video, I wanna recommend seven of my favorite crops that you can still plant in the month of August. Fall has to be one of the most overlooked gardening seasons. You're a little burnt out from the summer. Maybe your plants aren't doing so well. You have some disease in the garden and you may not be in the mood to plant new seeds. But you should definitely consider it because fall, I think, is one of the best times to be gardening. You have far fewer pest problems and you have cooler, more comfortable temperatures to actually be out working in the garden. But in order to have a fall garden, you have to do some planning and planting in the summer. Now, of course, your specific growing zone will impact exactly when you should plant these crops. And that's why we have an interactive chart on our website, which I'll link down below, where you can put in your first fall frost date and figure out exactly when you should plant a wide variety of crops for fall harvest. Now, the first crop we love planting in the month of August are beans. Now, I wanna use beans as an example to outline two really important points that you wanna keep in mind when planting in the month of August. The first is your first fall frost. This is the average date during the year when you expect to get your first frost. We're in 6B and our first frost comes sometime in mid-October. Once you know your first frost date, you can figure out how long you have until that date. For us here in early August, we have about 70 days left before we can expect a frost. Why is this important? Well, some crops like beans are sensitive to the frost, so you wanna know when that's coming and whether or not you still have enough time to plant. The other important thing you'll need to know is the days to maturity. Usually on the seed packet or on the seed website, you'll find the days to harvest for that specific variety and know roughly how long it's gonna take from planting all the way to harvest. But there is one caveat when you're planting in August and for a fall harvest, the days are getting shorter as you go into the autumn months. That means that your crops will grow more slowly and therefore it's a good idea to tack on an additional one to two weeks to that days to harvest statistic. Now back to beans as an example, most of these plants will have a days to harvest around 55 to 65 days. And I'd highly recommend planting bush bean varieties because those will give you all of their harvest all at once, hopefully just before your first fall frost. You can try planting pole beans, but they do take a little bit longer to mature in most cases, and they're more designed to be harvested over a longer period of time rather than all at once. The next group of crops that I love to plant in August are herbs, and especially basil and cilantro. Now, both of these are some of my favorite crops. Some of you may not like cilantro so much, but most of you probably love basil, and it's a really great idea to succession sow these all throughout the season, including into the month of August. If you've grown basil before, you know it gets pretty tired as the season wears on. It'll start to bolt and produce flowers, and the flavor quality goes down. The same is true for cilantro. In fact, I think this is one of the best times of year to direct sow your cilantro into the garden because there's less chance of it going to flower. Both of these are great for fresh salsas and tomato sauces as you're going into the fall. But also, in the case of basil, if you have garlic coming out of the garden, you can make some delicious homemade pesto. But the result is nice, fresh, sweet, less bitter herbs. I highly recommend planting both in August. Another crop we love to plant in the month of August is broccoli and cauliflower. Now in both cases, I'd recommend planting them in six cell trays and transplanting them out into the garden instead of direct sowing them. This is a good idea for a couple of reasons, mostly because there are still pests in the month of August that will impact your seedlings. By planting them in smaller trays, you can protect them more effectively. We have a small insect netting hoop house that we put over our seedlings to protect them from things like whiteflies and caterpillars. If your plants do get attacked by whiteflies once they're in the garden, you can use an insecticidal soap and if you have caterpillars, BT does a great job dealing with them. But once your seedlings are established, you can transplant them out into the garden. And these crops are actually frost tolerant, so you don't have to worry too much about that first frost date. And in fact, they tend to sweeten up a bit once they're exposed to some of those colder temperatures, which makes fall harvested broccoli some of the most delicious. The next thing you can plant in the month of August are leafy things. There are so many different leafy greens and plants that you can grow in the colder months including anything from lettuce to bok choy to kale. But my favorite would be Swiss chard. Early August is probably the perfect time to plant Swiss chard directly into the garden. It's super easy to direct sow in the garden, planted around eight to 12 inches from each other. And the plants come in a beautiful variety of colors from yellows to greens to reds. And this is another crop that is a little bit frost tolerant and will taste better harvested in those colder months. It's not prone to bolting, so you don't have to worry about that. You can plant it during the hotter months and you can start harvesting it usually around 50 days after planting. Some other crops I love planting in August are beets and carrots. 
Both of these are great for planting in the month of August. There's plenty of time for them to produce, and they're both tolerant of frost. Beets are really easy. You can direct sow them, cover them with about a half an inch of soil, keep them moist, and once they sprout, there's really not much else to do. And they're usually ready to harvest in about 50 days after planting. Carrots are a little bit more tricky, and there is a lot more variance in the days to harvest, but like I said, they are frost tolerant, so don't let that deter you too much when you're selecting your varieties. But where you do have to pay attention is for germination. Carrots are notoriously tricky to sprout because they don't like being transplanted, which means you have to direct sow them, and they don't like being buried, which makes it easy for them to dry out before they sprout. Carrots also like nice and fluffy soil, so it's a good idea to go through and make sure your soil is nice and light so you get nice straight roots. So for germinating, you wanna plant in rows about two to three inches apart and just sprinkle a little bit of soil over the surface of the seeds. Make sure they're nice and moist and then cover them with something like cardboard or a piece of wood to keep the surface of the soil nice and moist throughout that germination process. Carrots can take a long time to germinate too, so it's really important that you're checking on the seeds for germination. I've had carrots sprout as quickly as five days, but in other cases, it may take as long as two weeks before your seeds come up. So I'd recommend starting to check around five days after you plant to see if the seeds have sprouted. Once they have, remove that covering and keep them nice and moist until they're established. From there, they're like any other root vegetable. They need moderate fertility lots of sunlight, and they're really easy to grow. And yes, carrots and beets both taste better when they're harvested in those colder months. Carrots will actually overwinter here in our 6B gardening zone, meaning that you can leave them in the ground as long as you want and harvest them whenever you need them. Another great crop you can plant in the month of August are peas. This is another one where it's sort of your last call. They are a little bit frost tolerant, but a hard freeze will kill these plants. So you wanna make sure that you're planting at the beginning of August, giving them all the time they need to mature. Peas should be soaked before planting, but they can just be direct sown about an inch under the surface and ideally give them something to climb since they're natural climbers. These snap peas are some of my favorites. They're just so delicious and sweet and crunchy, and they only take around 60 days to mature from planting. And another thing you can plant in the month of August are flowers. Not every type of flower will give you blooms quickly enough, but there are some that we consider favorites, and those would be marigolds and calendula. Neither of these are frost tolerant, so you wanna make sure you look at that days to harvest. Some marigolds can take upwards of 70 days to mature, while other varieties are as little as 50 days, so it's really important to select the right varieties for your location. But both of these flowers are just so beautiful and colorful. They have some great fall colors, and calendula has become one of our favorites lately for its vibrant colors and its ability to be dried. Also, a quick fun fact on marigolds, some of them are actually fragrant. We grew a lemon variety last season that was unbelievably fragrant. It smelled just like lemons and had a beautiful bright yellow color. I know there are a multitude of other crops that you can start in the month of August. Let us know your favorites down in the comments below and what we should try growing here in our garden. Thank you for subscribing and liking this video and we'll see you next time.